today we're going to test for cations using aqueous ammonia. So the first cation that we'll be testing would be Fe2 plus and it's a pale green color. I thought you'll be able to see the pale green color here. So I've measured out two cm cubes and I'm gonna pour it in this test tube right here. So you know what two cm cubes look like. So we're adding our aqueous ammonia and you can see the formation of a green precipitate. I'm going to pour off majority of what's in the test tube in the soap water solution I have here. And then add excess aqueous ammonia the test tube to see if it will dissolve. So the green precipitate that is formed is insoluble. The next cation that we'll be testing for will be the Al3+, plus, that's the aluminum ion. I'm not going to use a measuring cylinder, I'm just estimating between 2 to 3 cm cubes right here. If we add aqueous ammonia, we have the formation of a white precipitate. Let me pour off most of it. See if the precipitate will dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia. The white precipitate does not dissolve, it remains, so it is insoluble. The next ion to test for is going to be the Cu2 plus ion. I do have the sudden 2 plus. Oh, it's just me, I wrote bad. <laughs> So it's CO2 plus and I'm pouring about two same cubes in the test tube. I'm adding aqueous ammonia. So we do see the formation of this blue precipitate. I have to be careful because the solution I'm working with is a bit concentrated and you need to observe two things, okay. So you have the formation of this blue precipitate and I'm going to pour off majority of what you see in the test tube right now. And I'm going to add excess aqueous ammonia. Look at what happens. So the blue precipitate dissolves to form this deep blue solution. We're now going to test for the lead 2 ion. This is a Pb2 plus cation. I'm trying to figure out if I'm seeing colors or it's a reflection off here. I don't even know what I'm seeing right now, so I'm not going to use a test tube. So let's use this one. So the PB2 plus ion now. There's a reflection from the iron 2 or the iron 3 that's still there. So if we add aqueous ammonia to the PB2 plus ion, then we get the formation of a white precipitate. If we pour off most of that precipitate, pour off more and try to dissolve it in excess it is insoluble I need to label this test tube so I do not forget what is in it so it's critical that you know what you're working with so I write PB2 plus okay The next cation that we'll be testing for is a ZN2 plus cation. So this colorless solution, if we add aqueous ammonia to it, we form this white precipitate. And if we add excess aqueous ammonia to it, and you need to know what happens to the white precipitate. So the white precipitate 
dissolves. The next cation to be tested is the calcium cation. And when you add aqueous ammonia to it, then no apparent reaction takes place. So we do not have the formation of any precipitate. And the next ion that I do need to test for is going to be the Fe3 plus ion. And if we add aqueous ammonia to it, then we get the formation of this precipitate. So let's see if it dissolves in excess. It does not dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia. The next cation that we'll be testing for will be the barium ion. Of course, it's an S block element. So, let me put it back over here. So it's a colorless solution, and when aqueous ammonia is added to it, then of course, no precipitate is formed. The next ion that we'll be testing for, oh, this is one, is the Mn2 plus ion with manganese in the plus two oxidation state. It's actually a pale pink solution. So let's look at what happens to the cation when aqueous ammonia is added to it. So we do have the formation of that precipitate in there. I don't know if you're seeing pale brown or what, you have to decide. So if I get rid of, let me get rid of more of it. Most of the solution that's there, what happens when I add excess aqueous ammonia? Do you see, still see the precipitate? The precipitate is still there, so it does not dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia. The next ion that we'll be testing is going to be the CR3 plus ion. So this is chromium in the plus 3 oxidation state. If we add aqueous ammonia to it, then we do form this precipitate. Let's pour off most of this. Let's see what happens. So if we add excess aqueous ammonia, then the precipitate remains, so it is insoluble. I'll now add some of the PB2+, plus. so the test tube labeled PB2+, plus of course, and I'm going to add some AL3+, plus. where did I put that solution? <laughs> I just had it, okay I found it. So I'm going to add some of the AL3 plus to this test tube of course. So let's look at what happens now when you add potassium iodide. You know, this is actually aqueous ammonia. Here's my potassium iodide solution. So this was stored in a dark bottle. I just poured out some for the test. This is what happens when you add potassium iodide to aluminum ions. So nothing happens. Doesn't matter how much I add. So nothing appears to happen. If I add it to the PB2 plus ions, look at what happens. You form this bright yellow precipitate like magic. <laughs> so that is how you differentiate between the lead ion and the aluminum ion because they give very similar tests um, when you're testing aqueous sodium hydroxide and also aqueous ammonia. 
So that's it for now. You've been learning sense with Mrs. C. Williams Massey. Bye.